Hello, so today I'll show you this improved version of wireless data transmission. Now before I begin this video, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do because I make really awesome content and you should definitely check it out. And now let's begin with this video. So what is serial data transmission and what is binary? If you don't know that, I'll have videos link in description, check them out. So once you know, uh, you can come back here and you will have a better understanding of what we are doing over here. So now let's start with this thing. So this guy uh, designed this amazing decoder. Now the great thing about this guy isn't that he just designed it. The great thing is that we were discussing about redstone. He had no idea what serial data transmission is. I sent him one of my videos. He learned it and the very next day he designed this. So this is a really great example that these things aren't really hard and the more people learn about these things the more uh, innovations will occur in this field of computational redstone. So I'll very quickly show you this thing in action. I click this button and then wirelessly this thing gets transmitted and decoded and you can see the exact same code as the encoder. And as you can see, there is absolutely no physical connection between them. Uh, and we have two decoders here and there's absolutely no connection between any three of these. So how does this thing function? So if you look over here, we have this button which pushes the sticky piston causing this observer to get pushed and updated. And this observer then powers this block and T flip flop, which then powers or depowers this a repeater line and this comparator is just so that the T flip flop can function then these observers get updated by these repeaters and they send a signal down this line which powers this repeater and also this observer also powers this repeater at the first pulse and then this repeater leads into pistons which then get powered after every one tick these four pistons get powered tick by tick and this is how our transmission system works. Now the observer pulses at a 4 tick interval. So during those 4 tick interval these pistons, these 4 pistons fire and cause the data transmission. Now at the receiver side you can see this burnout flickering. Uh, now this burnout has the ability to detect redstone updates all over the world. So if I just quickly uh, click this button over here you can see the torch kind of freezes at off for a very short time and we can then utilize that to send pulses or create pulses that can be sent and decoded in our serial data decoder and this way we can transmit data wirelessly. Now this torch over here actually sends uh, signal, flickering signals and we don't really want that. We want the signals to be stable. And this is why uh, we use this comparator to stabilize the signal. It kind of acts like a pulse extender. And then that signal unpowers this torch. This comparator over here limits the uh, amount of signal that can pass through this comparator. Uh, so that way it makes the pulse extender short enough for the torch to just give a short pulse and this way uh, this little circuit is how our data is received and then we have a very average decoder to decode the signal. Now there's a slight issue that I want to show so if I click this button over here you can see both of the receivers are receiving the data and both decoders are decoding however the decoder at the front somehow manages to miss the uh, last bit of data and that's because of the timing of the latches. So if you have that problem you just need to adjust the timing of the latches in a way that it is more reliable and there's another alternative way that is using two repeaters set to two ticks instead of one repeater set to four ticks. This will just make the system more reliable. However it will also double the size of your decoder. Now if you're wondering where this thing can be useful well, uh, suppose you have multiple like 10 or 20 devices that you want to control wirelessly, but you have just one switch. So whenever you flick that switch, all of the 20 devices get triggered and you don't want that. So using serial data transmission, you can make an addressing system which will only trigger any device when a particular binary code is entered. 
So for example, using this 8-bit system that I just made over here, you can control 255 different devices from the same switch. Now if you don't know what addressing systems are uh, and how they function, I have a video link in description so check that out. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, join my discord server if you want to learn more, check out my other videos and I guess that's it for today. So see you next time.